This is a week six lecture on foundation degree in building services and renewable energy, uh, building services design and retrofit for domestic applications. This lesson is on rain and surface water drainage and covers sanitary drainage to the building regulations. Subsoil drainage. We've already looked at the drainage and sanitary requirements uh, to get the wastewater out of the property. Now what we want to have a look at is the drainage requirements for external to the property and underground drainage. There are various drainage, uh, ground drainage systems available and the type that's selected for any particular domestic property will really depend on the site conditions where the property is located. Uh, the simplest type of external drainage that you can get is what's called a French drain, as you can see here on the the right hand side of the, a small schematic showing what a, a typical French drain consists of. And basically it's, it's a trench with a drain pipe in it um, that's covered with gravel or aggregate and then a filter cloth at the top to stop the, the aggregate silting up then some topsoil and then grass growing on the top. And that's your typical uh, very basic French drain. Comprises a series of strategically located rubble filled trenches and they're excavated to have a, a fall off to a depth below the, the high water table and basically the drain water away. The flow in such types of drain are uh, generally directed towards ditches, streams or other con convenient uh, water outfalls but uh, although you do have a filter cloth uh, on the top here over time the, the rubble or the gravel or the aggregate within the drain uh, will become silted up and may need replacing. Hence that's why in the more modern type of design you will have a sort of a filter cloth uh, which is basically a one direction permeable fabric membrane that lines a trench and acts as a silt filter and basically stops the, the gravel becoming silted up over the time, gives you a longer lifetime out of the drain. Subsoil drainage may be necessary under the requirements of uh, building regulation uh, part C3 and the purpose of the building regulation is to prevent the passage of ground moisture into the building and the possibility of damage. So basically any uh, excess water outside the building you want to ensure that you drain it away and that the moisture doesn't get into the building and damage the, damage the actual property. The layout and spacing of subsoil drainage um, depends on the basically the composition and the drainage qualities of the subsoil. So if you have good soil it'll drain away quicker than if you have a clay type soil uh, where the would be more issues with draining the, the water away in sufficient quantities. So for construction sites the, the depth of drainage trenches tend to be between uh, 600 to 1500 millimetres and shallower drainage depths may be used for agricultural or sports fields um, where there's a requirement for the ground to be to be very dry. The use of pipes within the, the rubble drainage medium creates a permanent void which basically assists the water flow that can be both be accessed and uh, clean when necessary. So in modern, modern uh, installations or drainage systems you tend to see will be made from, from plastic pipes such as the example shown here with uh, small cutouts in the pipe to allow the, the rainwater to come into the pipe and then it actually drains it away. So that would be the, the main sort of type of a modern one. So it would be a, a pipe uh, within the, the rubble medium um, that can uh, assist with the water flow and take it away and to deposit it in a water stream. So as I say, the modern ones would tend to be a, of a, a plastic UPVC type, but you still can find sort of clay and concrete pipes available on the market. Uh, there's British standards for the for the pipes. Uh, they specify their their makeup. Uh, perforated clay ones come under BSEN uh, 295-5, porous clay there's also a British standard 1196. Uh, you get profiled and slotted plastics, uh, which would be the modern type, BS4962. Perforated uh, UPVC under BS4660. And porous concrete, um, the BS with that has actually been draw withdrawn because there's currently no manufacturers are interested in manufacturing porous concrete uh, drainage pipes anymore. Silt and suspended products within drain pipes uh, they do eventually block the drains unless traps are included that allow for, for regular cl uh, cleaning of the drainage system. So you'll generally see a, a drain uh, trap, something like this, or prefabricated sort of concrete one here where you can see you have the inlet of your, your storm water 
basically any silt and sediment builds up at the bottom and then once the storm water builds to uh, in a suitable level it flows out again leaving the silt and sediment behind so this type of uh, trap basically stops the the entire drainage system from from blocking up and that the silt and sediment are gathered in a in a trap that can be easily accessed for for cleaning by maintenance workers um, a complete drainage system requires a pit which can be physically accessed so something like on the right hand side here at the bottom where a worker can get inside and clean it and it's a, an essential requirement particularly if the drain is to connect to your public sewage system you don't want to be putting a your water flow contaminated with silt and sediment into the public drainage system where it could actually block the public system. 